Uh, I'm here with David Knapp, Chief Energy Economist with Energy Intelligence. Good morning, David. Good morning, Ron. How do you think the challenges facing the industry have evolved over the last year? Well, obviously we're in a very different place this year than, than we were over the last couple of years. Uh, and part of that is that energy markets, like all markets, have cycles. Uh, we saw a very strong down move in prices because of the uh, U.S. shale revolution. Um, we're now uh, digesting that and, and looking forward. And uh, it's uh, become, a, I think, a more positive view of, of the market. Uh, the players, I think, are, are understanding uh, where they are now and are taking steps that will deal with uh, the situation that we're in. And would you care to hazard a guess where the Brent crude price might be by the end of the year? Well, it's, it's very interesting because obviously the supply side is uh, putting some downward pressure on prices uh, in the physical market, but there seems to be a great deal of enthusiasm on the financial side to buy. Um, and so uh, I expect that it's going to stay more or less in this range. Uh, it's probably going to stay over 80. Uh, personally, I think that's probably too high. Uh, it's not a, a threat to demand uh, disappearing, because uh, I think we can handle $80 uh, oil prices, but I expect the longer term trend is probably moving down from there. Which brings me to my next question, which how big of a risk is there, do you think, of a major supply gap in the next five years due to underinvestment, geopolitics or other factors? Well, I, I really don't think that there is that kind of risk, that uh, some of the frontier development is obviously at risk, and we're in a situation right now where we're dealing with uh, at least two and maybe other major gaps in our supply because of Iran sanctions and because of the Venezuelan collapse. Um, someday Venezuela will be back, uh, someday Iran will be back, but through all of that, uh, you have not just the U.S. shale, but you have Brazilian pre-salt, you have Canadian oil sands. Uh, all of those are uh, have logistics issues with them, however, and so those are being solved. More pipes we need. Ooh. And looking at kind of risk and an, an, another aspect of risk, I mean, we've seen the IPCC report this week highlighting the um, risk to the climate. Mm -hmm. But do you think, I mean, when do you think we, we will see peak oil coming? Well, I've never been a fan of peak oil. I've argued against it, you know. Yeah, or I, I think that there will be downward pressures. Obviously, there is an energy transition underway, uh, but fossil fuels are part of that transition, and especially uh, natural gas. Uh, and I see natural gas not as a transition, but as a destination fuel. Uh, among, obviously, the best among the fossil fuels, much better than coal, uh, better in some ways than oil, but there will be niche markets, petrochemicals, uh, uh, some of the transportation sector, I think, will continue to be uh, uh, an oil province, but obviously we have a situation with uh, global warming that needs to be addressed, and gas is part of that. Nuclear, I think, is also should be a part of that. Great, well, thank you very much, David. Thank you, Ronan.